Let's chat a little bit more about properties of definite integrals in the context of our lecture 45 here in our series. Um, in this situation, suppose we know the integral of f from 0 to 10 is 17, and we know the integral from 0 to 8 of f is equal to 12. Can we calculate the integral from 8 to 10? Well, the thing to notice here, if we want to do the integral from 8 to 10 of f of x dx here, this is the same thing as the integral uh, of 0 to 10 f of x dx plus the integral from 0 to 8 f of x dx. Um, so we saw, we saw in a previous lecture here that if we want to integrate from a to b of any function f of x dx, this is the same thing as integrating from a to c f of x dx uh, plus the integral from c to uh, the c to, to, to b right here, sorry, of f of x dx. So actually, I kind of fudged a little bit what I wrote before. Um, this wouldn't be from, if we want to do 8 to 10, uh, we should be a little bit more careful with our bounds. Uh, so let's try that again. Uh, this time around, we actually would want to do 8 to 0, and then 0 to 10. So here we're using these values where 8 was the original value A, 10 was the original value B, and then we're introducing this this, alter this, this extra term C right here. And so we know how to integrate from zero to 10, that's just this thing right here. But how do we integrate from zero to eight? Uh, we have, uh, sorry, we actually have zero to eight, we don't have eight to zero, but we can actually flip this second one around. That is this one right here comes down. And if we flip around the order, so we get negative, zero to eight, put the smaller one on the bottom, f of x dx plus the integral from zero to 10 of f of x dx, like so. Um, then using the information we know before, the integral from zero to eight of f of x was a 12, so we get negative 12. And then we add to that the integral from zero to 10 of f of x, which is 17. And so we can see that uh, 17 take away 12 is gonna equal five, uh, which is the the integral right here. So using those properties of integration can be very helpful in calculating these integrals and a similar calculation we see right here. Uh, let me add to that list a little bit some properties of integration, something we might call the comparison test for definite integrals. And the comparison test basically, if I were to illustrate it, will say something like the following. Let's look at property six right here. If f of x is greater than or equal to zero for all x inside of an integral, so it's it's a non-negative function, then the air, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx will also be greater than or equal to zero. So the idea is that we have a function f and it sits entirely above the x-axis, or maybe it touches the x-axis in certain places. Well, if we take our values a to b, and we look at the area under the curve, this is going to be a positive area. That's all that property six is saying. If you're above the x-axis, the area under the curve will be positive. Um, for the next picture, for, for number seven right here, if f of x is greater than or equal to g of x for all x inside that interval, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx will be greater than or equal to the integral from a to b of g of x uh, dx there. And so imagine you have something like the following. We have some function f right here. We have some smaller function, uh, let's say g, right? g sits below um, f of x. And then let's take our x-axis right here. So if we pick some values a and b, what can we say about the area? Well, the area that sits below the area that sits below f is gonna be bigger than the area that sits below g because f is bigger than g. So we get that type of comparison going on right there. And then the last condition, uh, give some explanation to what that's going on there, is if, if little m is less than or equal to f of x and capital M is greater than or equal to, um, and capital M is greater than or equal to f of x for all x is there, then we're gonna get that m little m times b minus a is less than or equal to the integral, which is less than or equal to m minus b minus a. This, this right here, eight is just a special case of seven right here. The idea is if you have a function, if you have some function f and we have a domain on the x-axis here, so we go from a to b. Uh, let's pick the maximum and minimum values on this function, right? Uh, so our maximum value would be about right here. So this is our capital M. And if we take the horizontal line associated to y equals M, uh, we get this flat line like this. 
if we look for the smallest value there, uh, so on this section, be about right here, little m, and if we take the horizontal line associated to that, see right there, and then we're going to slice it according to x equals a and x equals b. Uh, what seems to be going on right here? Well, if you look at the area below the red curve, this is a rectangle, and that's a rectangle whose height is m, little m, and whose length is b minus a. And so the area of that rectangle will be m times b minus a, what you see right here. Well, if you treat y equals m as a constant function, that constant function sits below the function f of x. So by property seven, the area under the constant function will be the area, it will be less than the area under f. And that area just so happens to be a rectangle. And then if we reverse directions with capital M, capital M is for maximum, little m is for minimum here. If you take capital M, well, the area under the y equals capital M, that is also again a rectangle. Its height, its height here is capital M and whose width is still B minus A. So the area of that rectangle will be bigger than the area of this, uh, this integral right here. Let me kind of show you how one could use that uh, to help you out with some estimation here. So let's say we look at the integral from zero to one of e to the negative x squared dx. If you remember from a previous video, integrating exponential functions is extremely difficult. Even with the forthcoming fundamental theorem of calculus, this would still be a very challenging problem. But what we can do is make some estimations. Um, if we take f of x to equal e to the negative x squared, what we can say is the following. On the interval zero to one, this function, um, is always decreasing. Uh, just to give you an idea of the graph, if we were to graph this thing, um, this, this graph would look something like the following, right? This isn't perfectly drawn to scale, but this will suffice for us. And so we're looking at an interval like something like this from zero to one. Just apologize for my crudeness there. Uh, but we're going to get this decreasing function. So since the function is decreasing, what this tells us is that f of x will be uh, it'll be greater than or equal to the point on the right, f of 1. Uh, whoops, that looks like f of 11, f of 1 right there. Because as it's going as it's going down the curve, f of 1 down here is the smallest point on that section. And likewise, um, it's going to be smaller than f of 0, because again, as this function is decreasing, the biggest point is going to be at f of 0 right there. And so we can do these calculations. f of 0, if we plug 0 into the function, we get e to the 0, which equals 1. On the other side, we're going to end up with e to the negative 1 squared. And so this ends up with just 1 over e as our bounds. So applying this, the, the property from before, the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative x squared dx, um, this will sit below 1 times 1 minus 0, the length of the interval, but it will sit above 1 over e times 1 minus 0. As the length of the interval is 1 in both situations, we get that our integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative x squared dx. It sits below 1, but it sits above 1 over e, uh, for which 1 over e um, is approximately 0. 0.367. So that is a pretty wide range of what we have right there, uh, but it still gives us some estimates on how big this integral is. So even if we don't calculate it exactly, we can estimate the area of this curve uh, using using these uh, these type of comparison to like tests here. And so that's actually going to conclude uh, lecture 45 in our series Math 1210 Calculus One. Uh, thanks for watching today. If you like these videos, please like them below. Um, leave comments if you have any questions. Subscribe. If you want to see any, uh, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, and I will hopefully see you all next time. Keep on calculating, everyone. Bye.